just you know, walk on through the three stands and we just keep walking toward turn, turn one, get down. Yeah, you know, amazingly, we were out here doing a tire test, and we had some of our guys out here off the team cleaning up the grandstands and prepping. And you know, naturally, with uh, older grandstands still, there's still weeds that want to grow up in cracks and whatnot. And uh, when they got to this section, they found a, a fairly large size hole in the face of the grandstand, about row seven, and said, hey, I think you guys need to come take a look at this. So we come and took a look at it, and sure enough, it wasn't just a small hole, it was a quite large hole. So we were able to knock a bigger hole in it so we could kind of tell what was going on. And when we did, uh, we found that it was a huge cavity, uh, you know, seven, eight hundred square feet. You could fit, fit literally a Chevrolet pickup truck inside this hole, and it was right underneath the grandstand. So we went into, we need to really open it up so we can get down in it safely and not put anybody at harm's way. Once we got that piece taken off and we were able to get in there and really take a look, a hard look at it and a hard dive at what was going on. Uh, you know, we saw some things that were kind of weird, you know, looking at it from, from our stance and the engineering stance. There was some columns that were placed there. There were some walls that were in place that you would never build for a concrete on grade grandstand. So it kind of made us think of some of the stories that we've heard in the past and, you know, some of that folklore, if you want to call it that, um, that there was some things that could point to that, that it was very plausible that there could be something more to this hole than just, you know, it was a, a big hole that just developed over time or whatnot. So once we finished that and got into those things, we knew we, we really got to race to the race, right? We've got to make sure we get this seized back up and, and safe backed up for the fans to be able to come out because these are great seats. This is one of the best spots to sit at for the race. Uh, we really had to repair and, and that repair state is a first figure out, you know, is it just a hole? Is there something that's causing it to be? Um, and we didn't find any sinkholes as people call them that you're familiar with seeing on the news where the bottom falls out and houses fall in we didn't find anything like that we were able to test it with some water and things of that nature and we knew at that point we had to fill it back up with something that was going to be sustainable being in such a weird place in such a weird shape you can't just throw rock or dirt back in and get compaction so concrete's your best option uh, so we started filling back up with concrete and we'll continue to do that till we get it backfield. Uh, we had to analyze and make sure how big did it go because naturally we don't want to put anybody underneath a, a structure that's not supported that we can tell it's not supported so we had to do some holes and drill some holes and, and test and throw cameras down in there that we could run in the hole safely to keep people safe uh, to see how far the extent was and, and like I said it spans you know literally I think the biggest part's about 150 feet left to right and then from row one all the way up to about row 10, 11 is where the, the hole actually is. So a lot of concrete's going to go in this, a lot of work's going to go back to put it back in shape, then get the stands put back in and the seats put back in place and the numbers and all the things that go. So when we get here in the all-star race, we've got a safe grandstand for them to, to be able to watch the race. You know, first of all, we want, we want to reuse the seats that were in place. Um, that was something that, that Marcus was really adamant about was the, these are the original seats that they sat on back in the days of old and, and now the days of new and we want to restore that. So making sure we put back the concrete the way that it was so we can reutilize the seats that were here before. Um, you know, trying to play up the colors that the, the stands were painted, which really is just the stairwells, but make sure we hit that up. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool things that we can do nowadays to really make things look old. So painting the numbers on the seats. Or, or the stairs and the rows and those things, we'll make sure we, we replicate what was here before to really play up and keep that feel that we, we worked so hard and were seized by Marcus to do to make Wilkesboro feel like it was a historical track and still today something like it was in the 90s. 
Well, you know, it's hard to tell. I mean, one of those things, we, we look for things that were either laying or buried, so we didn't want to dig too deep into it. Um, you know, I, I referenced, I think, being an archaeologist for a certain extent, but one, we don't have the time to go deep diving and really digging into things. We've got to get things put back together. But they're still, it's still plausible. I mean, like I said, there's, there's things that are underneath there that you wouldn't see under a grandstand, typically from a construction stance, like you wouldn't see columns, you wouldn't see a wall. That, that makes no sense why those things are in place. Now, there may be a, a reason that they placed that years ago, but um, those people aren't here to tell us those stories and just looking at it from a common knowledge, it really doesn't make sense why they're there. So I think it's still plausible. It's still got, you know, that Mythbusters needs to come out maybe and do something on it to prove it, but I think that there is still a chance that something was there. Um, you don't find holes like that just by chance, and you don't find columns and walls in place under grandstands by, by chance. So we had to move forward. Uh, we didn't get to spend a, an entire time really, you know, looking and digging around trying to find jars and shine or, or things of that nature but keep in mind if those guys were really doing something like that all that stuff was probably gone anyway right like they always they never left a site just sitting um, abandoned it was either blown up or disappeared or they moved it to somewhere else so the likability of finding something was probably slim anyway Great job, driver.